here's my CRF 200 rally. I finally got a 600 miles, so actually 500 and 582 miles, so just shy of 600 miles. Uh, so now I'm gonna do the uh, break-in oil change. I actually just cleaned the uh, chain, just clean and loop the chain. So I'm gonna uh, uh, change the oil now. I actually changed the oil after you know when I brought it home from the dealership. So I had what 45, about 45 miles or so on it. Um, so I, you know, so I'm kind of OCD, so that's why I did that. But now I'm actually gonna change the oil, you know, do the actual 600 mile oil change and uh, the filter and everything. So here's the part numbers. Oh, well, here's the part as far as the oil filter. And here's the uh, uh, gasket for the cover for the oil filter. And this is what I'm using. You know, I normally use Rotella T6, but uh, when I went there, Walmart didn't have any more, so I just picked up the uh, the what is it, Super Tech. Uh, so that works fine. And this this is the chain oil I use. In the past, I always used uh, gear oil, you know, uh, differential oil, you know, uh, like 75, 90, or Actually, I think I was using 9140 or something like that. Some really thicker stuff, but but this is a lot better. This is uh, even thicker than that. And and this Lucas chain oil, it's tacky. It's like a it's like a it's like a chainsaw. If you ever use a chainsaw, use chainsaw oil. The 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 oil is very tacky. You know, you you when you stick your fingers in and you spread your fingers open, the oil still you know there's a string of oil still connecting the two fingers. Uh, uh, so, so this is like that too. It's very tacky. So it, basically, it, it's it stays there a little bit longer. It doesn't cling. It it, cl it clings on a little bit better. It doesn't fling off uh, as easily. Um, so yeah, that's that. So let's drain the oil. So the oil drains right right there. You see see the nut right there. Let's see, hopefully this oil catch I have here is big enough. So I, if I could recall, I changed. The, when I first changed the oil on this the first time around, I actually changed the uh, the nut on here. Uh, or at least I, I think I did. Uh, changed the nut to a, a magnetic drain plug nut. So there should be a magnetic drain plug in there. Should, camera's in my way. I can't get it. Uh, looks like I'm reaching. So, so the factory nut was... Uh, the factory nut was not using a. Um, they were not using a. Um, a 17 millimeter. The factory nut is actually smaller. It's. Uh, I think it was. Was it 14 or maybe even 12 millimeters? But anyways, this one I have is is a uh, 17 millimeter. Actually, I don't think I want to use this because I have a. Because of this, the the uh, skid plate here, the oil might actually drip further away. So I need to use a bigger catch than this one. I'm gonna grab a bigger catch real quick. Uh, I should catch whatever dripping besides besides the uh, coming out straight from the drain hole if it drips somewhere else. Jeez, what the heck? Oh, found a little tightness there. Oh, you know what that was? That was the socket because again the factory one is, is smaller so it's a 17 millimeter one <laughs> because it's bigger it's actually uh the side of it here was actually rubbing against the the engine case and it was causing the nut to not spin out spin freely so i just you know slipped it down a little bit okay it's all the way off so you see that actually the oil is actually very clean you can actually see you see it's it's very clean again i i did clean this like i did change this uh at around 40 uh five miles or so um so so that initial you know the first metal on metal uh stuff was definitely cleaned off uh this stuff is whatever's left over or so i just you just saw that plop that was the uh the uh 
ceiling washer, the crush washer. So I see a little bit of metallic in here. Not a whole lot, not like the first time around. I think the first time around at 45 miles, you have a lot of metallic. The way it was very clean, you know, obviously with only 45 miles, but a lot of metallic. So let's look at this real quick. Here's the, um, the, the magnetic drain plug. So I believe this plug is, what was the name of this plug? I think they call it gold plug, something like that. And you see all the little particles of, uh, of steel here. All right. So you see that build up. So that's actually quite a bit. It's a lot, you know. Again, this is a, uh, this is, you know, the first 600 miles. So it's gonna have a lot. You know, if if I hadn't, if I had not changed the uh, oil at 45 miles, there would even be more stuff here. So let's wipe this off. So yeah, that's a pretty good amount of stuff there. There's like easily a millimeter, if not two millimeters of build up on this on the end of that train plug or the end of that magnet I should say so I'm not sure if I have a I'm not sure I do but I need to look for it uh crush washer that's this diameter the crush washer I have is probably too big these crush washer I don't actually know that these fits so I have this whole pack of crush washer I got from Amazon this is like a pack of I don't know, 20 or I don't know, this is more than 20, maybe a pack of 50. Let's see if it's the same size. Let me make sure. Oh, yeah, it's the same size. So there you go. So just right of uh, ceiling washer, you know, aluminum, aluminum washers. All right, so this is wet clean. So we got there. Oh, wind's blowing, wind's blowing, splashing the oil. Shit. God dang it. It's kind of windy today. A little bit windy today. All right, let's go to the other side and uh, pull the uh, pull the uh, the cover off. Actually, let me do something else before I do that. This is something I always do on every bike I have when I change the oil. I actually will. Oh man, this, this bike is kind of tall and heavy. Can't do it while I'm sitting here. Gotta stand up. <laughs> Use the leverage. I wish I just straighten up. Oh, it's gonna spill oil on me. Around this way. So actually, I would tilt the belt bike to the other side, slightly. So I do this, you know, tilt the bike back and forth a few times to let the uh, let whatever extra oil that's, that's in whatever crack and crevice uh, come out. usually do this until until it stops see how it's solid until that stops until it's just dripping then I stop so I would just keep on you know tilting it back and forth like that so this is, this is my OCD I have a little bit of OCD so this is where my OCD comes into play all right let's go to the other side uh, yeah I think I got everything <laughs> So I have all my stuff over here, I'm ready to go. Let's, uh, let's see if I can change our angle here. Oh, pegs right in the way. Uh, let me see if I can stay like so. Hopefully I won't be in the way. So here's the oil cover right here. Oil, um, oil filter cover, so it's an eight millimeter. Eight millimeter. Oh, look at that. This brake lever's in the way, so you gotta push it down a little bit. Down the way. There we go. So the uh, 
oil filter has a, uh, a spring on it. Or the cap, I should say. I should say the oil filter cap has a spring on it. So that's why it's pushing the cover out. So you gotta kind of push it in a little bit so that way it's easy to take out, take out the bolt. Okay. So here's the here's the uh, spring right there. So the spring sits right in here, right in the uh, just sits right in there like like so like like that, and it pushes on the filter. So let's look at the filter itself. That's that's pretty dark. Uh, I can't. It's hard to tell metallics and stuff, but but that's pretty dark though. Uh, the stock filter is uh, is you know it has that orange color. That that paper orange color. Let me actually let me grab the stock filter real quick so I can see it. So there's the stock filter. Um, right. Actually, angle this down a little bit. So there's the stock filter and the dirty oil filter. So here's the oil filter. You see it says towards filter cover or outside. So make sure that uh, basically you make sure you go like this and not like this. If you go like this, this the oil passage is coming out of this little well you guys can't see it. So it's coming out of this little hole right here. Actually it's, the oil is it's not coming out from here, it's actually going into this. Uh, actually let's, let's look at this. Uh, so here's the uh, where the oil is. So it actually comes out from here. So it comes out from there. Uh, I believe it comes out from there. Yeah, it comes out from there because the, the outside of the filter, the outside of the filter should be the dirty side. The inside of the filter is the clean, should be the clean side. So that means it feels, you know, it sticks like this. So that means whatever's on the outside is the dirty side, and uh, and uh, and it sucks through the, the outside here and it sucks through into the inside, which is here, and that sucks into the oil pump and it goes up, you know, to the rest of the engine. Um, so that's how that, that's how that works. Um, so stick this on right there, like so. I mean, I wiped down everything here, so it should be nice and clean. Um, got my filter in place. Let me put the, uh, the gasket on. So it's a good idea to, when you replace this, when you stick this off, change the gasket. You know, don't, don't, don't be cheap about it. This gasket is so literally only like a couple bucks. Uh, I think it's no more than five bucks. Uh, if you don't change the jack casket, it will it will lick on you. you no, know, it will seep, it will seep out on you. So don't, you know, save, save yourself the, the the mess of having a little bit of a leak, and uh, um, and replace the gasket. It's simple, you know. And the filter itself is actually pretty cheap too. This filter itself is, I think, um, it's like six bucks, seven bucks, or something like that. Some you know, some really low number. Uh, well, actually, it might be more now because it's because of the recent inflation. But you know this 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 setup I have here is actually for my from one of my 300s or whatever whichever one it is, what I had before. So basically, make sure you place the um, gasket oriented properly. So it's like that. Okay. Right? If you orient it any other way, it's not it's not right. So like so. Right. Now it's just a matter of putting the cover back on. So the cover has the spring. So make sure the spring is in place. And when you put this, you know, when you put this here. Make sure the spring doesn't drop and and uh, and lose and, and loses its place. Uh, actually, let me get the cover or the, the gasket in. I just kind of lay it on top of this right here, like that, like so. See that how the gasket just lays on top of that. So that's how it goes in. So I'm keeping it up like this so that way the spring doesn't fall off, fall off or fall over. Uh, then from there, just kind of going like so. Like so, put in the bolt. And you have to push the cover in because, because you know, because you're pushing against against the spring, and the spring is uh, you don't. Otherwise, the spring will want to push the cover out. Uh, 
what I can't put the oil in yet. I was gonna put the oil in. I need to close up the uh, the uh, the oil uh, drain plug. New push washer on there. So I don't usually use a torque wrench for this. I think it's a bad idea to use a torque wrench. You just you do it by feel. You could actually, as you tighten this, you can actually feel the the push washer getting crushed down. Then when it stops getting crushed down, and it, and it feels you know feels like the bolt is pretty much stops moving. That's when you stop. Don't go any further than that if you do. That's that's how you strip your engine uh, engine case. That's a very expensive mistake. A lot of people make that mistake too. A lot of people. People that 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 tend to use uh, that are you know kind of new at, at uh, working on bikes and they tend to use torque wrenches and that's what happens. Uh, bad idea to use a torque wrench on on that. Um, most of the time, people have shitty torque wrenches that don't. Uh, they're not very accurate to begin with. And also one of the other thing you have to realize, and people don't, is that usually with torque specs, most of the time, torque spec is, is based on clean, dry, uh, clean, dry threads. Uh, when your thread has oil on it, it changes the, uh, the spec number by quite a bit. Uh, so you have to actually reduce the number by a lot to uh, uh to compensate for that oily thread because a lot of the torque that you that you actually read from a tor torque wrench a lot of that that number that torque number comes from the uh, um from the friction of the threads themselves and not the actual uh how much force you're actually turning the the thing So, so again, I don't remember off the top of my head how much the oil level was. Maybe it was more than 1.5 or 1.6. Maybe it's, it was 1.9 or something like that. Um, let's see. So right now I'm at uh, I'm at 400, 400 milliliters left. So let me do another, maybe another 200 or so. Bring it to uh, 1.8, I guess. That would be. So, so I'm down at 200. That's 200 milliliters now left left over. So now we have what 1.8. Okay, so now it's showing just just below the top mark. Which should be fine. If I'm level, it might be about halfway between the top and bottom mark. Should be fine, but I'm gonna I'm gonna fill it up to the top mark. Um I think I'm still slightly more to the top mark, but anyways, uh, I think this video has gone on way too long. I'm, I'm gonna probably shorten it out, hopefully, see if work, how I could do on the editing. Um, so, anyways, yeah, so that's the oil, oil change um, on you know the 600 mile oil change. Uh, and I, now I just need to wipe down whatever oil, you know, in the under the uh, the skid plate. And, it, and just clean it up a little bit and that's it, I'm done. Thanks for watching.